this in this video we are going to see about the contiguous allocation under memory management scheme so here uh, uh, let us imagine this as a main memory in main memory already we have seen the lower part of the memory the operating system will be loaded as it consists of lot of interrupts so most of the time and almost all the operating system will be loaded in the lower part of the memory when i say lower part of the memory the memory is starting from zero till the uh, then uh, it extends up to the size of the memory then in the remaining uh, spaces the uh, process will be occupied so early in the early method of uh, uh, this contiguous allocation is one of the early method of main uh, memory allocation so main memory is it is usually divided into two partition one is for operating system and the other whole thing is for the user process so resident operating system usually held in lower memory with interrupt vectors and user process then held in the higher part of the memory so here we have seen for process 1 process 2 process 3 and so on here i have given when you a small portion of the memory so what happened after the pro the process p1 the code uh, statement in the p1 should not or the user process should not access p2 the user uh, p2 or user process p3 or it should not accidentally access the code inside the operating system also so this is what we have seen for that we have the two register called operating system maintain two register called relocation register or otherwise called the base register and the limit register so using those two registers the operating system uh, protect the memory of one user from other user as well as uh, its space that is operating system space so relocation register is used to protect user process from each other and from changing operating system code that is it should, the user process one user process should not go on change the coding of the operating system then everything will crash down it should not change as well as its data so for that only we have these two register base register and the limit register so base register contain the value of the smallest physical address smallest physical address physical address is nothing but the main memory address so for example process p1 for this what will be the base register it will be 4001 because up to 4000 we have the operating system so the process p1 start from 4001 means that will be in the base register and limit register is nothing but up to this so if you say that limit register it will be 1000 okay so 4001 to 1000 because that is the limit if if you roughly you take this as 1000 4000 to 5000 we have 1000 uh, memory addresses so limit register is so when you add 4001 then 4002 and so on each memory address generated by this process one will be checked with the limit register and the base register if it is below the base register then also it will raise an error if it is after adding of base register and limit register if it is above that also this then also it will generate an error so because uh, uh, by doing so it protects uh, one user from wrongly modifying the coding of the other user so mmu which is nothing but the memory unit it maps logic address dynamically what is logic address for this process p1 logic address is 0 1 2 3 up to 1000 for this process p2 again it is from 0 to 1000 so this is uh, mapped with the actual address this is nothing but zero to place is mapped with 4001 process p1 the first one line number 1 will be uh, the memory address of this will be matched with 4002 and so on that is called mapping so the logical address is mapped with the physical address dynamically because it may be moved to other places in that case also it it will be mapped in whichever place it is moved so relocation register scheme provides an effective way to allow the operating size size to change dynamically because uh, and this is called transient code because uh, it may be uh, the operating system may contain the device drivers uh, of different devices so some device driver may not be used for a longer time in that those cases it should not occupy the memory it can be removed from the memory and placed in the secondary storage so whenever the purpose of the device driver come across then those codings can be loaded into the operating system space 
so those things are called as transient core so in that case when there are say for example five device drivers are there only two device drivers are there uh, are used the remaining three device driver can be removed from the operating system and it can be put uh, placed in the secondary storage so in that case it can be reduced uh, 4000 can be reduced to 3500 and the remaining 500 can be used for some other process that's what so such cat codes can be removed and these spaces can be used by some other process so how it maintains that uh, protection how it gives a protection for the memory so memory address that by this already we have seen this but anyway i am telling you okay cpu generates the address here uh, it generates the logical address then the uh, in the memory you have the, uh, the the process will be placed in the memory so here base register and base plus limit limit is nothing but where the process starts and where it ends that will be the limit base will be where it starts so those will be placed in the actual memory location where it starts and where it ends that is called limit so each and every address generated by this will be checked whether it is below the above the base address or not if it is yes that is 4000 mean 4001 it maps and it makes it as 4001 so it checks whether it is above 4000 so if it is yes then it goes inside then it is check whether when base and limit register is on array is it less than that if it is yes only then uh, actual execution of that process will take place the cpu scheduler it selects a process for the execution the steps of this the cpu scheduler selects a process for the execution from the input queue the dispatcher loads the relocation and limit register with the correct values as part of the context switch the context switch also we have already seen so when the uh, process is switch, uh, when a process is transferred from the secondary storage to main memory also that also will be called as a context switch so in this case what happens what is the uh, sometimes they may be swapped to some fast memory so in that case also when it is brought in Uh, again, its uh, 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 values of the real uh, values will be the starting address, ending address. Everything will be loaded. So the dispatcher loads the relocation and limit register with the correct values as part of the context switch. Every address generated by the CPU is checked again these register these two registers for the validity. In this way, operating system and other user programs are protected from modification. So if the user process is saying here, he should not go on. uh unwantedly access the other user process so that can be done by by this checking when in the continuous memory location allocation we have two types of partition uh, coming so what is the uh, it it follow this two part two type of partition and allocate the memory so what are they fixed partition and variable partition so what is fixed partition here the memory is Uh, 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 split into fixed partition. That is, say for example, if each memory is of size uh, 10k, then this is also 10k, this is 10k, this is 10k, and so on. So fixed partition. There is variable partition. Is uh, if the memory is considered as a big hole where there are so much of memory, and uh, the process will be allocated then and there as it arises. So let us let us see the fixed partition. the memory is divided into several fixed size partition so for example if this is 10k this may be some uh, 20k and this may be again 10k and so on so it is uh, it is fixed into uh, different sizes but that size is fixed that is why it is called fixed size partition each partition may contain exactly one process so in each partition we put one exactly one process it occupies one process so what is meant by multi programming when more than one process resides in the main memory then we call it as a multi programming so in order to achieve the multi programming we must have this method of uh, 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 method of allocating more than one process in the main memory so the degree of multi programming is bound by the number of partitions say for example here only three partitions means only three process can be placed so the multi programming capacity of this operating system is only three so it depends upon the how many number of fixed partition you have that much number of process only you can uh, place in the main memory so when a partition is free 
a process is selected from input queue and is loaded into the free portal. So how say it is not that only three, three process can execute. There are so many process. So in that case, how it can be allocated? So for example, process eight has completed its work and it leaves the memory. In these places, other process can occupy. So for example, process nine is coming and it requires less space. It is not requiring uh, this much of space like process eight. So in that case, it can be allocated. But in fixer partition, this is as an example for a variable partition. But in fixer partition, it is not so. The whole process eight will be removed, and in that case, the another process will be loaded. So the that process will occupy the whole of this. So when your partition is free, your process is selected from the input queue and is loaded into the free partition. So wherever the space is free, that uh, new process will enter. When the process terminates, the partition becomes available for another. So when it completes, it will be removed from the memory and that space is allocated for the new incoming uh, process which is available in the in input queue in a ready state. So that is how the fixed partition works. Variable partition. In the variable partition, the operating system will be considered as a one big hole. Okay. Uh, OS occupies, the memory management will be considered as a big hole. The, in the memory, uh, only uh, a certain portion of the lower memory will be occupied with the operating system and the remaining portions will be considered as a one big hole. So now suppose process 5 is coming, it occupies some space. Then process 8, which is which is requesting more space than the process 5, it occupies the next space. Then comes the process 2. Once the process 8 completes its uh, work, it leaves the memory. So in that case, this portion is available for uh, any other uh, process. Then what happens? Process 9 comes. Then the process 9 will be placed here. So it occupies less the space than this actual space available. Now it is placed. Then process 10 comes. Now it is placed. And any other process which requires only a space of this size will be again allocated. Now if the process 5 completes, it leaves a space. And it makes it indicate that this space is available. And the operating system keeps a table where which which partition is available and which partition is not available all those details will be maintained by the operating system so depending upon that table the process will be allocated space depending upon the space requirement of the particular process so here initially all memory is available as a one large hole that is what whatever i have said multiple partition allocate this say this hole block of available memory holes of various size are scattered throughout the memory yes here there is one big hole then here this and this suppose process 9 leaves imagine process after completing this process 9 leaves me here there will be a hole so the hole is distributed uh, here one hole is there here one hole is there then when the process 5 is uh, 9 is completed sorry process 5 is completed then this also becomes free then these two can be combined okay because this, uh, imagine process 5 left the memory, process 9 also left the memory, then these two can be combined and can form a big hole. So when your process arrives, it is allocated memory from your hole large enough to accommodate it. Operating system keeps a table and maintains information about the allocated partitions and free partitions. When your process arrives and needs memory, a system searches this set of holes. These are, there are a lot of holes. As I said, this is one hole available now. Now, this is also this also left the thing after completing when this also is available. And some other hole also. So, the way if the hole is, uh, when your process arrives and needs memory, the system searches this set of holes that is large enough for this process. So, for example, 10K memory means here 10K available. The incoming process is also requesting only 10K, then this can be assigned. Suppose it requires 12K memory, then this cannot be available. It searches where 12K memory is of free space is available. So if the hole is too large, okay, if it is very big, it is split into two and one part is allocated to the process and the others are returned to the set of holes. As here we have seen, this is a big hole. So one part, it is allocated, process 9 is allocated somewhat and this space will be allocated to the set of free holes. Then again a process 10 comes, again this space, in this space process 10 is allocated and this will be returned to the set of available holes. So when your process terminates, it releases its block of memory, which is then placed back in the set of holes. 
so it uh, after this complete this will be when suppose process 10 is completed this space this will leave the memory and this space will be given to the available set of holes if they are next next if they are uh, uh, if uh, this uh, process 10 leaves then here also a hole forms this is already a hole exists these two will be combined and form a big hole like this so if the new hole is adjacent to other holes they are merged to form a bigger hole 